Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got four replays in the pinnacle of the brand new Eastern Alliance Soviet Heavy line that's recently come out, and that is the Object 640 Black Eagle. If you do like the video, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe down below as it really does help out the channel. And yes, the Black Eagle, it's a pretty good tank. The gun handling on it is pretty good. It's a bit derpy at times, which goes with the rest of the line, but it's way less derpy than the previous two tanks that we've played, so the gun is actually pretty good. The DPM on it is okay. The armor on this tank is actually really nice. It tends to bounce quite a lot, but once again, it is actually one of those tanks that the armor sometimes works really well, and sometimes it feels like you get absolutely butchered. It's one of those not-in-between ones, right? The turret armor on it is actually really nice as well, and you've got these very, very good ATGMs, same as you do on the previous tanks as well. Generally, with the mobility at 77 kilometers an hour, this tank is actually a pretty good tank to play. I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing it. It has been really fun. There is no real difference between the stock tank and the fully upgraded tank. It's like a little bit of DPM and a little bit of accuracy and a little bit of track traverse. And that's about it between stock and fully upgraded. So you're only going to see one replay of its stock and then the rest are all fully upgraded replays for it. But yeah, the Black Eagle... It's got 77 km an hour top speed with the build that we have. It's got a 31.23 horsepower per ton ratio with 28 km an hour reverse speed, which is really, really nice. It means this tank is exceptionally mobile. Now, that is the best mobility you can get on this tank from the outset in terms of the top speed because you've only got one engine on this vehicle. You've got 43.16 degrees a second track traverse with the build that I have with the stock tracks, so it does get a little bit better when you get fully upgraded. We've got good ground resistances, we've got 43.44 degrees a second on the turret rotation speed as well, which is the best we will get out of it, because there's only one turret to pick from on this vehicle. you got 6.49 second reload with this stock gun, which is about 5k DPM, with a 0.24 accuracy at 100 meters, which is really good. 1.6 accuracy drone movement, which is pretty nice as well. And a 0.38 accuracy drone rotation with the build that we have, which is absolutely phenomenal. It means that actually you could probably drop snapshot for something else like fire prevention, because this tank is just like the TATU before it. It does like to burn if you get penned by higher caliber tanks, so be very, very careful of that. You do have 550 alpha on this cannon with 1700 meters a second shell velocity, which again is very, very similar to the TATU before it. You've got four and a half degrees of gun depression, which is one of the bad points of the Black Eagle. Trust me, the, the, the four and a half gun degrees of gun depression can be a bit painful at times. So you've just got to know where and when to put yourself to be able to make the most of the tank's other strengths. So what do I run in terms of a crew and equipment on the Black Eagle? Well, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Clutch Braking, Rapid Aim, Trap Mechanic, and then in terms of the equipment, I run Advanced Loader, the Gun Stabilizer, and the Traction System. Traction System to be able to go up to 77 kilometers an hour. The Gun Stabilizer to get the accuracy during movement down as low as possible, and the Advanced Loader to get the best out of the DPM. Now, I want to get the accuracy drone movement down low as possible, so that's why we run run and gun and steady aim as well. Snapshot is probably actually not needed because the accuracy drone rotation is 0.38 with the build that we've got. So, even if we took snapshot off, that'd still be very, very good. So, you could probably run something like fire prevention or firefighting because this thing does like to get set on fire. So, it'd be nice to be able to actually put that out a bit quicker or just try and prevent it if possible. Down to you and how you want to set up the vehicle. And then rapid aim and track clutch braking to make the track traverse and the track traverse as good as humanly possible so that I can feel exceptionally nippy with my fantastic 77 km an hour top speed as well. It's down to you, like I say, in how you want to play the vehicle and how you want to set up the tank. As you can see, so far, this game, we've managed to get an okay amount of damage, but the team has crumbled quite quickly, and we are in a position where we're boned. We naturally got set on fire, which again happens in this tank quite often, but we managed to bounce quite a few shots off of this vehicle while we were keeping our front on, but we were screwed because there was basically their whole team there. And we ended up finishing the game with 7.7k damage with the little bit of blocked, the 512 base XP on a loss. A sad, sad time, but we did what we could um, that in that game on Mannheim. And we're on to the second replay. And the second replay, we are now completely fully upgraded, which means for the Black Eagle, we've basically got the top tracks and the top gun. So now with your top tracks and top gun, you've got a 47.96 degrees a second hull rotation speed, which means it's basically 48 degrees a second. It's very, very quick to turn. 
and you've got now a 6.27 second reload, which is 5,200 DPM, which again is a little bit better. Your accuracy during rotation has got a little bit better, down to 0.36, and your accuracy at 100 meters is now 0.23, and your accuracy during movement is now 1.24, which is actually quite a significant difference, because it was 1.6 before that, so that means that the aim circle basically doesn't bloom out with the build that we have on the vehicle. You don't ever really feel the 1.93 second aim time ever. And if you do, well, it's 1.93 second aim time. It aims in very, very quickly. Which means this gun is always ready to go, which is definitely a delightful thing for the Object 640. It's pretty much the same as most of the other Era 3 MBTs, and the fact that their guns are fantastic and always ready to go, right? And we've got, you know, 606 penetration on the standard APFS DS with 697 penetration on the premium APFS DS. Which means we can pen pretty much everything we're going to face with that, except for a Malo maybe in the front. But we can still try and go through his drive wheel if he does give us that, which, you know, can happen. We also have 750 penetration on the ATGM rounds, which have a 400 meters a second shell velocity or, yeah, travel speed which have 1,200 damage, which you've already seen me use at the start of this game, which netted us about 1,200 damage. We were quite lucky to actually hit the, the Black Eagle that we hit with it, but, you know, we take it. We take the damage. The ATGMs, I only do carry two because I basically use it as an opening salvo to see if I can catch anyone out that I might get the side of, and then I might do something like I'm going to do here and see if I can reload them to catch some other tanks out that have flanked. We are going to make a mistake with this ATGM, but, you know, you can use it. So there's one thing to be careful of with the ATGMs on this vehicle. It's the same as it is on the U, is the fact that you have a 100 meter arming distance, which means you cannot use them in close range, which is one of the reasons that I actually don't use them all that much from the only reason I carry two, because I tend to actually, in some of the longer games, get to a position where I don't have much ammo left. So I don't want to be carrying ATGMs where I can't particularly use them all that much in some of the close ranges. So I make sure I only have two. So I use one for an opening salvo and I've got one to dish out a big amount of damage if I know that I'm going to have time to reload it and catch someone out. And like I say, you saw me make a mistake with that one really. I fired at that Leclerc T4 that was on the move. It was never going to hit and I should have just saved it and fired at the other guys that were on that corner. But hey ho, it is what it is. So something to be careful of with this 640 is the area that I just shot at on that 640 and somehow bounced. We're probably ricocheted. And that is that whole back bustle on the turret is ammo rack. Yes, the whole back end of that turret is ammo rack. And I ain't kidding. It's only about, what, 40 millimeters thick on the back of it. And 100 millimeters thick on the sides of that bustle, which means pretty much everything will pen you in the back of that turret. And most things will still pen you in the side of that turret. And as I say, it is all ammo rack. The whole thing is ammo rack, which means that if a big round was to hit you in that turret bustle, the likelihood is your head is going to blow off. Now, I've not had it yet. But the likelihood is it's going to blow off. Now, looking at the armor module health, it's 550 HP for the health of that, that ammo rack, which is actually really quite high for an ammo rack health, which means that someone's got to do quite a lot of module damage to be able to get that head to pop, which means the ATGMs of this vehicle, which have 600 HP of module damage, are likely to blow the ammo rack of another 640. But the standard rounds, which have 175 module HP of damage, are likely to take three to four rounds to get anywhere near the likelihood of actually blowing the Amorak. So you've got to be very, very careful of that. It was not an instant Amorak if you pen it with normal rounds. But the thing is, if an ATGM does enter that back turret bustle that you can see there, some shooting the other 640, be aware that, yeah, if an ATGM hits that, uh, good night, sir, your head is going off. And that is the way it is going to be, you know? But it's pure pain. It is what it is. It's just something to be very, very wary of. Now, the other thing that you've got to be careful of with that turret bustle is something you saw me do earlier on. And that is the fact that it actually sticks out. If you're shooting at a 640, it has 80 millimeters of turret, or of armor, sorry, on that bustle. And it sticks out above the very, very good turret armor of the Black Eagle. So if you're, thing, if you're on flat ground and you're shooting at this thing, or it's using its gun depression, 
You can just see it there. You can actually shoot the turret bustle and you'll pen it quite easily as well. So that's another way to take it down if you don't shoot the lower plate. But we finished that second game with 7.6k damage, the second class. 1,313 base XP, an average game there for a 640, an average game for an era 3 tank, realistically. But yeah, so it's sort of something, if you are shooting at this thing, you can actually shoot the turret bustle as well when you're on flat ground. Because it's the little sticky outy bits that come on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the turret. And again, there's a potential that you could damage the Amorak if you hit that as well. So it's something to be careful of when you're actually in your 640 as well, is that you're not just impenetrable through the turret. You still need to keep yourself wiggling, moving, because they could actually catch shots in that turret front and obviously the upper plate is very very good on this vehicle the turret front is very very good on this tank the lower plate isn't that great though so here we go 80 gm opening salvo we've got it loaded we look towards where this tank spawn we found a thumper yep good night mr thumper we knew the amarak is somewhere in the middle of the thumper so i decided okay i'm just going to launch an 80 gm at him and see what happens and yep, that's how we start the game. 3,750 damage from that first ATGM. We take those. We take those. And that's why we run the ATGMs as an opening salvo. We run it so that we're ready to go. See if we can get big damage at the start. And then switch instantly straight back to the APFS DS. So that we can use and maximize the DPM of the vehicle. So we're here on this third replay. We're on Kampelberg. I mean Nibelberg. And we're going to go try and help our friend over here. Because our friend seemed a little bit isolated against a few tanks in this BU. So we're going to come streaming in with the Dothraki Screamers. We're coming to come and save the day. Hello, sir. We end up bouncing off the upper plate of the BM, which was kind of a sad time. It's like, hello, Mr. BM. Well, you know, let me shoot you through the lower plate. There we go. We get a shot straight through his lower plate. and goes in. And we're going to have awkward moments now because of the gun depression a little bit. And bad choices of shot as well. So we end up hitting the upper plate of the BM and it bounces. And I think, well, 606 penetration. I should go through the BM, right? And the answer would be no, not at this angle as we ricochet again. But this one, we put straight through the turret front of the BM because you can shoot it straight through the turret front if you avoid that spaced armor on the front. And that's what we did. And it was one of those moments where I go, why didn't I just shoot that in the first place, you fool? Oh, well. We're up to 4.8k damage, and we're going after the Leclerc, who, oh, takes a big smash from an ATGM. And we pick up our third kill of this game. There's 10 tanks left on the enemy team, and we're again closing in. There's a Weasel Toe. Hello, Mr. Weasel. I want to smush you. If I can smush this Weasel, that would be glorious. So we try and get a shot at him on the move. Sadly, the shot doesn't go anywhere near, and we're just going to go on a Weasel hunt. And that's because, well... We'd know where the rest of the enemy team is. It's all towards our spawn. Which means we could have a chance of being able to ram this guy if we can do. And it's always a good meme to ram it. So we're just going after it to try and get rid of it. Because you never really want to leave a weasel alive. We get a shot there into the weasel is on the move. He pops smoke. And we're just trying to keep up with him. And naturally the weasel can go a little bit quicker than we can. We only have a 77 kilometer in our top speed. But he's ducking and dodging. Dipping and diving. He listened to Patches O'Hulahan. And unfortunately we're just missing these shots at this weasel on the move. I really want to. You can see it. I'm like Mr. Weasel. There is no escape from me, sir. I will not allow it. We tried to take a shot free aim on the move, but that one just hit the floor. I was kind of hoping that I might be able to cut off his escape path with my friends as well. So he ends up firing at one of my friends. We try and fire on the move again. We miss, and we're just on a wild goose chase with this guy. And we end up crashing straight into the Leclerc, which takes all of our momentum away. And the Weasel is basically now going to be able to get away from us because we have no momentum anymore. We're not directly behind it because we crashed straight into our friend who just stopped dead in our path. Which was really awkward. But it is what it is. So I'm seeing this weasel's running away this way. I'm thinking, I'm not going to get after this weasel now. He's basically going to outrun me. But we're still trying to get shots in. But realistically what I want to do is if we go, oh, maybe I can squish it. Yes! Squish, bug, squish. Oh, we got it in the end. Oh, yes. That's what we like. That's why we chased it the whole way. That satisfaction. Oh, I didn't think we were going to get it. But we got there in the end and, you know, there was no disappointment. So we've seen the heavy tank on the hill at C8. He's isolated. He's very, very alone. I'm in my 640. I feel like I can go 
basically dominate this guy. So what we're going to do is get towards him ahead of my team and see if we can put some big damage into him. Now again, I could have loaded the ATGM, but the distance, I'm concerned about the distance going after this guy, that I wouldn't actually be able to fire the ATGM at him. And as you can see, as we come around the corner, we are only like 60 meters away, so we'd never been able to use the ATGM. We ram him though to make it so it's as difficult as possible for him to get his shot off. He ended up missing, and it's like, hello Mr. T72B, I know, I know. You're what you are, and we set him on fire and finish off the T-72B. There's only two tanks left on the enemy team, and they're just behind the smoke that has been popped. So we're just going to wait for smoke to disappear so we can try and get a shot at the Leclerc T4. But he's in a position where I, I don't feel like I can quite penetrate it, and sadly, we end up do ricochet off the turret face. Kind of wish I'd just held on to the shot. That was never going to hit that 2A5. He ends up getting shot by an ATGM that tracked him, and the 477A ends up finishing him off. And at this point, yeah, it's like, well, that Leclerc T4 is behind the castle. I ain't getting him. And basically, my whole team is over there, so no matter how much I thought about trying to move after him, I was never getting there. And we finished the game with a really nice total there for the Object 640 Black Eagle. And we finished with the five kills, 8,993 damage, 745 assistance. The first class with 1,437 base XP. A really nice game there for the objects with 40 Black Eagle. And we got a lovely smosh on that, that weasel. It's always great when we manage that. But we're on to the final replay of this video. And this is the best game that I've had in this vehicle so far. And we're on Fred Vang. And on Fred Vang, you can see that I am loading the early ATGM to start us off. And I was thinking about going to the position at G3 and trying to cut off anyone that goes to G1-2 and shoot those guys in the side. Maybe go and get to the position at E4, shoot people in the side that go up the D line. But as you can see, there was only two tanks and a light tank going to the JK. And most of my team came this way. And naturally, it's era three. So if you do not stick with your team, you're probably going to die all alone on the opposite flank as you find pretty much the whole enemy team. So I decided, okay, you know what? I'm changing up what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the top of this hill and see if I can catch anyone crossing and get a big ATGM into them. So we're just looking for the shot into the T4. Can't quite find it. Then we see something in the corner of our, our eye, and it's like, hello, Mr. 292, fire the ATGM. Oh, off with his head, two in two replays. Good night, sir. 3,850 damage in one shot. Oh, those ATGMs, when they hit, they hit. It's, it's delightful. But we're up to 4.3k damage, because we also managed to get a shot with the main cannon into a thumper. And now we've got this Leclerc in front of us as well, who we are going to put the pressure onto. So we actually managed to shoot the drive wheel there that tracked and penned the Leclerc. And that's because the Leclerc actually only has 30mm of armor behind that drive wheel. Which means that you can actually overmatch it, and especially since you've got a 125mm gun. You can actually just, yeah, if you shoot the drive wheel and avoid the spaced armor, track and pen Leclerc's pretty easily. So, unfortunately, the Leclerc popped smoke, and my friend charged in, so it's like, okay, you know what, we're going to use this smoke that the Leclerc dropped in to our advantage. We put a shot through the lower plate of the Leclerc, but obviously we l waited a little bit too long, which meant that the smoke actually fully disappeared. But there's a Leopard 2 in the distance that's just staring at us. We aim for the back end in the hope that maybe we could set the Leopard on fire, but nothing comes to fruition there. And again, we put a shot at him because we knew where he was, and eventually he's going to disappear because we're not going to actually be able to gain sight of him again because of all the foliage and the trees. Just looking for possibly the drive wheel of the T-72B because it's always good to track and pen things if you can in this era, but we ended up bouncing on the T-72B. Looking for the roof there of the KWS-3, which goes straight through because I felt like at the angle and looking down on the top of the KWS-3, I might actually be able to track, well not track it, might actually be able to shoot through its roof deck and that's exactly what we did. These guys at the minute are giving us a veritable farm, and it's a very nice thing for them to do. It's like, hello, thank you, sirs. I will kindly take the damage, thank you. And that's what's happening. We're up to 9.3k damage with 994 assistance, and we're just keeping the hurt going. Which we do. Actually, to be fair, this is one thing that I was thinking of with this vehicle. You know, with the snapshot that we had on the commander, you could quite easily drop that for Deadeye. And that way you'll increase the chance of doing module damage by 6%. And that 
might actually help with setting things on fire, damaging am Amorax, that sort of thing. So that's also something that you could do. It just came into my brain at this moment in time. So it's something you could quite easily do to be able to maximize your potential because you could set things on fire and that'd be great. But obviously there's also a placebo effect with the Deadeye that sometimes... Is it actually working? Who knows? But it could be increasing it. It might not be because it's all that back-end mathematics stuff. So we don't actually know if it works or not. But you never know. It might do. But anyway, while I natter on and digress, we're up to 12,017 damage. We're on, we're on for a good score so far, and there's still seven vehicles left. So we're going to close the distance, see if we can get to these MBTs that were down on our left. Unfortunately, missed the shot that was on the Marder 1A3. But we're going to close the difference on... Difference? English is hard. We're going to close the distance on the Leopard KWS3. And see if we can, again, farm some damage on him. So he shuts down my thumper friend, turns his side to us, and sadly we rush the shot, which hits the dead wreck. What I'm trying to do is find the shot. Our friend rams himself to death on the KWS3, which I couldn't recommend. But we've only got premium rounds left, so we've got that 690-odd penetration round now on our vehicle, which means that we are, we are going to butcher basically most things we face, unless it's a Malo. And even firing at the upper plate, I was hoping, looking slightly down, we might be able to go through that guy. But we get detected, which makes me think, hmm, maybe he's over there. And there he is. We fire the shot on the move, and it sadly just hits the floor. But because we got detected, that made me think, oh... He's looking at us. Well, the only way he could be looking at us and not be spotted is over in that distance, and that's where we managed to get the early shot off. But sadly, like I say, we ended up missing the shot on that Leopard 2, and yeah, sad times. But we still managed to get two, three shots into him and finish with the victory. Three kills, 14,091 damage, 994 assistance on that. Bit of, quite a nice bit of silver. The first class, the high caliber, 1607 base XP. Really nice game for the Object 640 Black Eagle, which is actually a really enjoy enjoyable vehicle at the top of Era 3. Damn solid tank to play, and yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice tank, and it's pretty worth, worth grinding for. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Success.